Let's talk about someone that was definitely not shaving any points this season. Missy Gannon coming in off of her last w- win. And is that right? Tour champion as well? Tour, Tour champion. points champion? Yep. <laughs> That's right. Big mon- money Missy in the house. How's it going, Missy? <laughs> Good. How are you guys? Oh, we're doing fine. Good. <laughs> so, so coming, coming in uh, off the win, I, I'm going to be honest with you. I did... The points thing was kind of crazy because I think Gannon had it like already won halfway through the season. So there wasn't really any talk about that. I didn't really hear mm-hmm. that many, that much talk about the points. Can you give me a little rundown? Like, were you in the lead for a while or was this something that was uh, based off of your MVP win? I was in the lead for a little while. I feel like uh, maybe up until Idlewild, I might have been up on top by a little bit. Um, and then, you know, I, I didn't quite have the finishes I wanted after I got back from Europe and I think Holland then overtook that first spot. Mm. Um, but we were all very close. I think it was, it was, you know, within a hundred points between the top four of us. So I think it was, it was, it was going to come down to the playoffs and, uh, you know, I think, I think after GMC, like Holland took fourth, I took fifth and, uh, she stayed in the first place spot. I knew that was like a big tournament that I wanted to try to play pretty well at, but specifically I knew that like Holland was the one I needed to play better than. Um, and it's funny because I talked to Holland, uh, after MVP and, and it was, you know, I didn't, I didn't really know what needed to happen. It, there's, you know, it's hard to really keep track of all of the, the, the little points that go into the playoffs, but um, she knew that she needed to take fourth or better um, to beat me if I were to win, I guess. So um, the fact that she took six, I think really solidified, you know, me taking the top spot. Yeah, we almost need to have, you know, it's election season. We almost need to have that guy that does all the crazy calculations of like how the president is going to win. We need to have mm-hmm. someone like that do. Maybe we get Edwin doing that last <laughs> next year, you know, getting on like all the different possibilities. If Missy finishes second, Holland can finish fifth. And then that, that'd be interesting. Is that something that you guys still are? Um, especially with like how the tour championship has now changed. Is Mm -hmm. that something that's like almost nearly as important as like winning a tournament now is to get yourself in the the tour points champion. Do you get anything for it or do you just get the the strokes? I think we just get the strokes. I know like in the past, the national tour, we used to get like a bonus for, for placing a certain, uh, in a certain spot. Um, but, uh, I think it's more of a pride thing, at least in my opinion, because really in the top, the top four, you're only separated by like three strokes. So, um, you know, I feel like that could happen on one or two holes in one round, uh, out there. So yeah, the fact that I start with a 10 stroke, uh, advantage over, you know, the bottom part of the field is, is nice, but realistically I'm only one stroke better than Holland and, uh, two strokes better than own and, or whoever, uh, Kristen, and then three strokes better than own. So really like, it's not, a, it's not like a huge advantage, at least in my opinion, to my closest competitors and to the best people in our division. I've always tinkered with an idea that we get rid of the world championships and then we just call the points winner the world champion since you actually <laughs> go play across the world and you get your points and then you know you're like you just the most call that major player. something else i mean it, you know it'll probably be that way after the fact you know after i've already done it so yeah I, I, it's probably gonna happen at least once <laughs> one <day. laughs> right yeah, exactly. if you if you want a trophy or something too for it missy i can find some in my garage i'm sure that uh we can, we can, we can arrange something. Hey, I have it right here. Actually. Oh, you did get something. Look at this oh, freaking my thing. Gosh. It's huge. Oh, what am I going to do like with that. this? That's awesome. I mean, yeah, that it's, 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 it's I know it, it literally is bigger than like half my body, but, um, yeah, uh, it's cool, <laughs> but it's, it's a little obnoxiously large, but it, you know, I'll take it. <laughs> That's a sweet one. Jeez, though. They got, you got to start a tradition of like filling it up with something and having to eat it or drink it. I suggest well, water. Everyone, everyone say, I'm going to go banana pudding. I would do banana pudding. <laughs> Yuli, what are you putting in it? 
<laughs> what am I putting in it? Yeah, if you if you if you want, you get to pick whatever you want: drink or food item. <laughs> oh man, well, Missy, if you have one, go ahead. I was just giving you a little bit of time while yeah. you. I, I mean, mean I, I'm ta- I'm gonna put some sort of alcoholic beverage in there and okay, drink fair. it with my friends. Yeah. Oh, okay. You're <laughs> you know, share. you just fair take enough. a dunk out of there, and then you'd have a little toast. I think okay. would be okay. pretty good. I, yeah. Some say could, champagne or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I could see some good old fashioned like jungle juice in there, but um, <laughs> yeah. maybe like some ice cream too. That would be sweet. Oh, ice cream. <laughs> I like that. Ooh. A big old big ice cream sundae. What, what was that stuff that we had as kids? It was like. Uh, worms and dirt or something and it was like <laughs> yeah. oreo yeah. Dirt, the, the dirt was like oreos yeah. and you had all the gummy worms coming yeah. out of it oh my yeah. god a thing full of that would be oh. Ooh, all right there you have it um okay one, one question i did want to ask you though is, is we don't we don't get too much knowledge about like the behind the scenes of how some of this stuff works and uh yuli definitely jump into because you're kind of in the same boat but how was the process how did the process go of getting your own, you know, the captain's thrasher, like getting mm-hmm. your own kind of disc? How, how did that press process happen? Was it your idea? Was it Discraft's idea? How involved were, th- were you? Well, I, I think that, um, I think Yuli kind of set the precedent there. Like, you know, he, he, he did a, a really cool thing by, you know, giving up his spot as a captain at, on the elite team to make room for some of these up and comers. And, um, you know, he t- really took, you know, took that opportunity to let other people kind of come onto the team and, and, and hit that spot. Um, and I, you know, that's a really, it's a really big move to make, uh, especially for somebody that I think still is really deserving of an elite team spot. And, um, so he kind of set that, that tone to have that, uh, opportunity with this craft. You know, I think Yuli will share the same sentiment. They're, they're just such a great company to work for and work with. And, um, then I was, I was given the opportunity with Yuli and with Bob to potentially take a, 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 a co-captain role, um, to kind of expand our abilities as captains to kind of, you know, oversee the team. And, um, it was just a natural progression. So I, you know, it's really just a a matter of like Yuli setting that tone. And then it it was just a really nice opportunity for me, um, to that natural progression into having my own captain's disc. So I think Yuli can probably speak to that process more than I can. I'm just a byproduct of what, what he, what like foundation he, he laid down for me to, to take that path. Yeah. So I wasn't honestly really expecting it. I, I had the, the Raptor that I helped design to get that when I first came on the team as, as the captain and they let me design the traditional Raptor. Um, and then, you know, we have rules in, in place for our elite team spots with points and everything. And I just wasn't, I had a year where I wasn't going to be, uh, able to, to make it. And they gave me a choice. They said I could keep my spot and we had, uh, you know, a B in the crosshairs. And I was like, Hey man, I'll, I'll step aside and we can give him my spot. And then I can go over to wherever, like I can just be a, on the team, whatever, help Bob with however I need to help Bob, just be the captain. And I don't need a spot. You know what I mean? Cause at, at the end of the day, I really, I really don't, they've always hooked me up so well over there. And I think that Bob and, and the company saw that that was a big move. You know, um, they saw that it was, uh, an unselfish play. And then he hit me with an idea of, he's like, Hey, why don't we just make another disc? We'll call it the captain Raptor. And then that'll be your disc and we'll release it. Um, one time a year. Uh, I think that was the biggest thing is the one time a year thing. They, they really came up with a great idea there because typically you would have to have a world championship before you got your name on a disc completely. Uh, and then they shipped that out to, you know, like the Dick sporting goods and all those places like that. So it's a really, you have to earn that. Um, and so they came up with a great idea of like, Hey, why don't we just come up with a new mold? And then we'll release it one time a year and the fans really, really kind of caught onto it. And that that's really what happened. I, I can't, 
there's no other explanation except for they saw the hard work I put in and without me asking, they hooked it up. Um, which is, which is what this craft does. If you put in the work, they're always going to, um, I feel like do the right thing by you. And I think that's why a lot of people want to come to the team. And a lot of people think that Discraft is, is the best team on the planet. And it's because they really care about their players and, and we're not a selfish group. You know, um, I take the role as captain and I know Missy does very seriously, very, very seriously. I'm involved with a lot of different things and I enjoy it, but I enjoy it because I feel like when my fingerprints are on things, things can be a little bit more successful with the stuff that I know and the things that I've been through in the game. And, um, they've allowed me to, to kind of take that leadership role to, to a level that I, I know Brody and I have gone back on this conversation of there's not really a team, but if there is this craft's the closest thing that we got, you know? And I think that's a, that's a hard thing to do in a game where it's an individual sport. And I think that, we've done a really good job of at least keeping some sort of um, that sort of aura around what's going on in our company. Missy, do you see that going away? This, this idea that I don't know if Innova was the first maybe to come up with it. And some of these other companies have kind of, you know, decided that's the route of, you know, players getting names on their, on this and not having to win a world championship. Do you see that maybe, uh, going away in the future, you know, for example, you being a very popular player in FPO, like next year, if you win a bunch of tournaments and then don't win worlds is Discraft going to be like, sorry, Missy, you got to win worlds. Or are they going to start looking at some players being like, you know what, this is a great marketing, um, move for us to work with this player that we have signed to the fullest ability. Yeah, I think it's, I think it's going to be, uh, it's going to get harder and harder for that to, to happen. But I do think that we've seen it already in, uh, not only Discraft, but like you said, in many other companies, I, I think of right away, I think of Innova, like you said, um, I know big germ, uh, got a signature disc, uh, Nate, Nate Sexton got a signature disc. Um, you know, they both have accomplished so much both on and off the course. Um, and I think that that in of us saw value in that. And then I think of, um, MVP with Simon and Eagle, uh, very similar, similar situations there as well. They're just very popular. They've done other things, uh, to, to get their name out there and to make themselves very marketable. And I think that, as uh, as we move on, and it's not just about the world titles. I think as players, we still feel that we all want a world title. Um, but I think that as the sport grows and as more eyes come on the sport, um, there's other things that are valuable to companies, um, and that that definitely drives the the that's a motivating factor for them to put our names on on discs and it's no longer just about the world titles and i think that that's that's okay and i think that again it's just it's a business ever you know everybody's trying to run a business whether it's your own uh you know uh what you what you want to do as a player uh and also as a company um so you know at the end of the day, it's a business. And I think that, that, uh, there's a lot of different things that, that the companies are going to be looking for, uh, to, to see value in their players. Where, how do you feel about, uh, the, the, the women's game right now? You know, another year has come and gone, uh, disc golf is kind of, I think solidifying itself a little bit after the crazy COVID boom that we saw, how, how are we feeling about the women's game where it's at fan interaction, viewership, uh, purse money. Mm -hmm. Well, I do think that I saw, uh, I've seen a couple of comments like they're, they're kind of comparing it us to the WNBA, um, and just, uh, being able to see a little bit more, uh, variety in the talent and the abilities of our top FPO players. Um, I think we obviously always, you know, we have a long way to go, but, um, the fact that people are already kind of making those comparisons is pretty cool. And, uh, you know, I don't think it goes unnoticed. I've seen it and I'm not, I mean, I read comments and I, and I do kind of keep in the know about things, but, um, you know, for, for that to even be, uh, a comparison, 
that we're seeing now is uh, is really cool. Um, you know, I think, like I said, we still have a long way to go, but we are obviously seeing a lot of a lot of parity, just like we were seeing in NPO. I feel like within the last couple of years, um, where we kind of were we weren't sure who was going to win any given weekend. Um, I think I think Gannon is the obvious uh, kind of pick this season, but we're still seeing a ton of different winners come out of the MPO and and this year we've seen a lot of different winners come out of the FPO so I think it's getting more exciting it's getting more competitive and um, there aren't quite uh, there are there are there are more uh, picks for any given weekend that I feel like we've seen in the past yeah, I mean, back back in the day, it was pretty much just Kristen, 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 mm-hmm. and now you know you, Hall, and a couple other ladies have definitely stepped up to where that that's a little bit more difficult course to course. I mean, Owens had some great wins as well. Um, I don't know if I've asked you this when you've been on, but where do you where do you see the future? with the pro tour going, do you, do you view it as being FPO and MPO together, like a tennis product, or do you view it more like the golf route where they're two separate tours? Uh, I, I think you, you might, we might've talked about this, but I can't remember if it's, if it was this uh, podcast or not, but, um, you know, I think I, I've, I've said before that I, I do see a future where there are two separate tours. I think it's well in the future, um, unless we can have another sort of entity coming in, come in like the disc golf pro tour that, uh, maybe is just for the women's side. But again, I think we're, we're years apart from that. Um, and it's funny because I do, I do tend to watch both PGA and LPGA, um, just because I'm curious how those tours run. And there is an obvious, uh, difference between the quality of production. Um, it's, it's, pretty glaring and i i've chuckled at it before watching it because i'm like man you know this is this is probably what our future is is going to be like um which is not great but also is you know it depends we don't know we don't know how it's all how it all could shake out i think we need more sponsors i think we need more big big sponsors you know uh whether it's whether it's alcohol whether it's you know products whatever um you know we still have a long way to go just as a pro tour to get uh to get those big big sponsorships. Um, but yeah, I do certainly see a future where we're separate. Um, you know, hopefully we can get the women's field to grow that way, grow in a way that we can have a self-sustaining separate tour. Um, because I think that there are many, many, many MPO players that are, uh, kind of waiting to get on tour and figure out how to do that. Um, while, while still trying to, you know, kind of, there's a, there's a limitation on, on the number of people that can be on the field at any given weekend. Um, so yeah, I think we're years away from that unless we can find more private venues that maybe have multiple courses that we can kind of flip flop, um, divisions on, on either course. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. We're, we're, we're a ways away, but I do see that in the future. Yeah, it's a, well, you know, real quick. I just want to add to that because, yeah, because I was just, I had a thought. Cause it's a very interesting one because I was on the other side of the fence with this because it didn't pertain to me necessarily, but I can see certain people's point of view of where they're saying that representation is like a huge thing, right? You'll have someone of color say like by me being in the sport and being the limelight, I now have other people that look like me being like, Oh, that can be me. And like growing up as a kid, I always just kind of pushed. I always just kind of looked at whoever was like the best, you know, like Serena mm-hmm. Williams. I've, I've used this as an example. Like Serena Williams was someone as a young kid. Like I looked to that person as like motivation to go out and play tennis because mm-hmm. she was just dominant. But I understand that there might be some people out there that have to be like, Hey, I'm going to pay attention to something that looks like me or I can kind of relate to. And I I would say that is the FPO's biggest hurdle right now is the majority of people that play disc golf, the majority of people that consume disc golf are men. Mm -hmm. So they are going to probably watch men play. Mm -hmm. And so any, any advice or any thoughts on like, how do you get more women interested or women involved in disc golf? 
yeah, yeah. You know, it's funny that you say um, about. I mean, I think you're you're totally right that the majority of of our consumers are men, and they're likely going to you know want to watch uh, their favorite uh, male players. Um, but I do think it's it, every time I do do signatures after the round or whatever, I always hear maybe it's. Well, no, it's a variety of, of ages, um, but many of the guys are like, hey, I watch FPO because I feel like they're more realistic to mm. what I can do. Um, now, I think that might still be a very small yeah, it's subset. a minority, of course. Sure. Yeah, but but I don't know. Like, I think that I keep hearing that in every single weekend. You know, it's, oh, it's more fun to watch you guys because I feel like I can relate to your shots a little bit better, even though you still would beat me. You know, they always kind of like filter in a little compliment in there, but mm -hmm. um, <laughs> um I I think uh, to be able to get to answer your question to be able to get more women in the sport um yeah uh, I think we just it, it's a really hard question to answer I think we just need to continue to have more uh ladies leagues I think I think more and more we're getting um guys I, for instance, I had a really good um, experience in Colorado where I learned how to play disc golf. The local clubs were so open to the women that did come and did be, were involved in the local leagues. And I think that's really, really important to feel supported by the majority of people that are at your weekly league. And, um, you know, it, it's, it's, it's easy to kind of like, you know, not think about the women that are coming and and whatever, but like, luckily I did not have that experience. Everyone, op you know, opened their arms to me and the maybe three to four other women that would come every week. Um, and I think that was a major, uh, stepping stone for me to even feel confident coming out and playing it so much so that by the second year that I started, that I was in that league, I decided to play MA3 and, and just see what I could do because I was getting better quickly and I was, and nobody was against that. Everyone was like, sure, let's, let's see. And, um, I think I came in like third in MA3 or something, which was pretty big compared to the field. Um, is that scary to enter in a tournament like that and know that you're playing <laughs> against like all men? Is that, is that a weird, is that, is that a hurdle you think that, is out there for a lot of women that maybe prohibit them from wanting to play? Maybe I, again, I can only speak to my, my circumstances, which was not that okay. um, I, w I was very much welcomed into it, but I can certainly see situations where I don't think, I think that, people would be intimidated by that, whether it is the woman that's trying to play them in the men's field or the men not really wanting this woman to play. And I don't know. I, I, there are definitely different, there's so many different people out there. There are so many different communities. Um, and while in general, the disc golf community is very inclusive and everybody wants, uh, everyone to have fun for the most part, I do feel like there are probably very many situations where that's not the case. Um, again, I don't know, fully uh, other than Mike's own experiences, but I do want to encourage anybody out there that maybe is experiencing that kind of like discouraging behavior in their own local club, or maybe they're the people that are perpetuating that behavior, you know, just to remember that like we're as a sport, we're trying to grow and it, it just doesn't help anybody to, to discourage anybody from doing something in our sport, um, something good and just playing no matter who you are or what you're trying to do. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's, a. Uh, it was, I had, again, I had a great experience. I think you just have to put yourself out there and it's not going to always be comfortable. I also think that not a lot of people, maybe not a lot of women are, are like me where I'm not easily intimidated, um, by anybody. So like, uh, I don't even, I wouldn't have cared if somebody didn't want me to be there. I would have done it anyway. Um, but that's, again, it, it takes a certain kind of person to be able to feel that confidence. Um, in those situations when you're learning something, I, I even think about like pickleball. We were down in Florida in Jacksonville when we had our team thing. That was the first time I ever played, played, played pickleball. And I was intimidated by all of the people that were so invested in the sport already. And I was just trying to, I was just trying to learn. And I, <laughs> or, and I could hear people say, I was hearing the people that were at those local, uh, you know, pickleball event, uh, pickup 
t- you know, games. It wasn't even like legitimate. It was just like people coming back, coming down and playing for fun. But I could hear people saying like, Oh, what court do I want to play on? Oh, I don't want a charity case. I'm not going to go to that court. Like, I'm like, <laughs> are you crazy? Like I am think I'm sitting there. I'm like, okay, <laughs> I need to find somebody who's nice and just wants to play for fun and go play on that court because yeah, it's, it, it is intimidating. I can understand that. Um, that being the case in all different sports and disc golf, uh, just the same. So anyway, I, w- I rambled, I, that's what I do. So whatever. <laughs> uh, but yeah, <laughs> I, 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 have, I had a question that like almost goes directly with what he was kind of saying. At least it, they, they can kind of marry each other is what do you think? Is there obligation that you guys have to grow the sport? And what is that? It, do you think that you playing in winning tournaments is enough or do you mm-hmm. think because let's say that FPO division is smaller, less people watch it. What can you guys do to, is it almost the same question, but as far as like your own brands and stuff, I see a lot of people like yourself get out there and you do clinics and you do all these things. But then I also see other people who are just really focused on playing same in our division, but it seems like more people are really investing into themselves, which in turn grows the sport. Like take Brody and myself, for example, we do all Mm -hmm. kinds of stuff because we want to um, get more eyes on it and, and bring more disc golfers in and, and those types of things. I don't see that push and it might be a, an intimidating thing to do as well to get on, um, make a podcast or do a YouTube channel or go do a clinic by yourself or go to a school or, or do those things. Do you think that people should take that more as an obligation? Like you need to do this because of the success that you have, or do you think it just, goes like par for the course for different people. Uh, Yeah. uh, It's funny because I, I definitely, I do those extra things to an extent, mostly on, you know, working with like you play, but they are the ones orchestrating it. And I'm just invited to be a part of it. You know, Uh, that's a little different, you know, that's, it doesn't feel quite as like heavy uh, to, to, to do that type of thing. Whereas if I had to go out and like, organize this whole, th- the, the whole thing, I would maybe feel like it was taking away from my ability to prepare for the event. Right. Um, whereas if I'm just invited to go later in the afternoon, after I've already practiced, I don't feel that much of a, a weight on my schedule. Um, at least, at least that, that, that's what I, that's how I feel. I, I, I do feel like I, I have, often felt like I should do more. Um, and I am doing some of those things, like I said, but I, I do feel like, Oh, what if I did more practice round, uh, you know, videos, or what if I did more YouTube content to be like female women specific? Um, my, for instance, my, my mother-in-law is like picking up the sport right now in, at the, you know, in her sixties, because she's been watching us do this for so long that she, and she used to play ultimate Frisbee. She used to really love throwing Frisbee and now she's learning to play. So she's looking up videos on, on YouTube. And she commented just this last weekend, how she can't find a lot of women posting videos about technique and form and things like that. Now we are getting more and more of that uh, as of late, but I do think that there is a lot lacking in that, um, that space. And, uh, that when she says stuff like that, I'm like, man, I guess, you know, yeah, that's, that's why I feel like I should be doing more. Um, and it's not just me. It's a lot. It's, I think uh, all of us could be doing more. Um, but again, it's like a balance between what is my priority? What am I most focused on? And I, I, I am going to take the selfish route is as far as I can say. And I'm not even saying that negatively. I think that I don't know how long I have left in the sport, right? You know, nothing is ever certain. So like I am a hundred percent focused on my results and how I prepare to get those results that I want and uh, nothing else matters. And I, I don't feel guilty about that, but I do feel like there's a little bit of me that that feels like I should do more. Um, And so, yeah, I think there's probably a lot of us that feel that way. Um, And so, yeah, it's it's such a it's such a tough balance um, to juggle. And I do think I do think, again, like a lot of us could be doing more of that 
but I can't, I mean, I, I, I can't fault anyone else for not doing it because I, I feel the same way. Like I, I need to focus on, on my personal goals. Um, so yeah. Do you have anything coming up with uh discraft special releases or anything with the uh, MVP win and tour championship that people should know about? <laughs> Well, we're trying to figure that out um, because it's, you know, it's late in the season and I don't, you know, I, I want to make sure we do something that's, um, I don't know, more meaningful than just like a disc release or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, TBD, um, but it's, uh, I thought you, you said know, CBD for a second. Uh, I was like, all right, <laughs> to, to all right that's, a, that's a cool sponsorship <laughs> coming up. Sweet. <laughs> determined um but yeah nothing that i can say uh uh, here right now yeah gotcha okay so definitely everyone uh keep your (laughs) eyes and ears open for any (laughs) any news coming uh missy we appreciate you jumping on always a pleasure talking with you i know it might not be a major in the record books but i i I think this next tournament is a big one for you guys and i know we'll all be watching (laughs) and rooting you on so good luck out there Actually, wait, wait, wait. Yeah, I want to yeah. say something. I want. I did watch last week, um, a little bit of it, because uh, this stuff is so long. I am telling you guys. Hey, um, some people like it, but I get it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, hey, we're no, like no. one of the shorter podcasts. I feel like. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. Uh, um, I want to comment on my forehand into the green on. Holy oh yeah. <laughs> We were shocked. <laughs> what were you I doing? <laughs> I was like, this um, is I, her perfect backhand putter shot that I've seen her throw thousands uh, of times. I want to, I want to feed into the conspiracy. I think I read this somewhere, uh, that it was a power move, uh, on my part. Show because, dominance. <laughs> right. We just saw my closest competitor who is very proficient in very, in a lot of shots. Um, not make that shot happen and uh that i only threw the forehand because it she threw a blue lucid justice so i chose to throw my blue z swarm (laughs) (laughs) into the green and make the shot happen just as a power move and flex on her but uh yeah anyway i'm gonna i'm gonna feed into that conspiracy i like it it made me laugh and i thought it was uh, that's funny funny. (laughs) power move i'm not gonna lie the people will never know the true answer i guess uh but wow okay Thanks for bringing yeah. that up. That was, yeah, that was definitely a shocking moment when I saw that down the stretch. I was like, <laughs> I what is happening? It. But you pulled it off. That's all that really yeah. matters at the end of the day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So congrats on the win, Missy. Good Thank luck you. coming up here. Um, and we'll be all be watching. I'm sure. 